Greetings all you manics of Minds on Crimes and welcome back to another Warframe Showcase. Today I have a special treat because I'm re reviewing four weapons. All primary kick guns. <sighs> the gaze, the catch moon, the tomb finger, and the rattle cuts. All of them. And oh my god, my poor, poor forma and my poor, poor platinum. Oh man. I did build some of these multiple times too and um... Yeah, my overall stance on primary kick guns, they're good. They, they work. They could be a little more, though. Anyway, we're going to be starting with the Rattle Guts, because it's my favorite, and it's the, the name is the EE3 Blaster. If you understand the reference, good on you. If you don't, it's Boba Fett's Blaster from Star Wars. Anyway, it is comprised of these uh, parts. So, now... At first, I went with the high rate of fire, low recoil sort of thing, but it did not have the damage. It was super freaking weak. Anyway, this is the build. It is three forma, and I know I could put prime shred here, but this thing uh, has a pretty high rate of fire. Um, wildfire is here uh, because extra mag capacity is actually pretty underrated. Um, you shoot longer, you do more damage. Anyway... I do have a ribbon available. I don't have it rolled right. And I don't think I'm going to bother with a ribbon with this thing. If I get like critical damage or status chance or some other bullshit, some fun stuff. Like magazine capacity or innate heat, that'd be fine. This weapon comes with innate radiation and impact puncture and slash. Mostly, mostly puncture and slash. Some people will say, oh, that impact. You got to get a ribbon get, to get rid of that. Here's the thing with getting rid of impact because I've done it. You do nothing against high-level corpus. You actually barely do anything to high-level corpus. So impact, why do people hate on it? It's easily one of the best status types to get through shields fast. Oh, just build toxin. You can't always just build toxin. Some weapons, you just can't do that. And you can't just build gas because gas is garbage now. Anyway. I love my rattle guts, and of course I had the Hunter Moo Moo setup, and then the uh, Heat Corrosive setup. Anyway, so, level 140 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. I am not even going to bother to go into a real world mission, because... This is Heat Viral, and uh, yeah, the... When, when, when everything first came out, the um, PAX Charge took ages to refill the magazine. Now it's pretty quick. So my dream of having a custom infinite ammo primary is is reality. I mean, look how strong this is. This is really strong. And yeah, against normal level enemies, this is going to shred. Against corpus, this is going to shred because viral plus radiation and heat. Yeah, the, nothing like that. It's anti-robotic, it's anti-grenier uh, most of the time, and it's pretty anti-armor. It's not as anti-armor as, cor as uh, corrosive, but also uh, radiation will do more damage against uh, alloy armor, i.e. bombards, butchers, those sorts of things. Anyway, then there's the Vile Hunter missions. Um, yeah, it, it works very well with this critical chance and critical damage. Um, keep in mind, Nizha has nothing on him. No arcanes. So yeah, the that works very well. This is um the I think the strongest I could have made it. Um the recoil is a bit much. Once I get more forma, I'm definitely going to put stabilizer on. Uh hiccup god. Killing me. But yeah. Yeah, the the bleed ticks are uh a lot. There's a lot of them, and they're really damn strong. But yeah, that's that's that build. And then the heat uh, corrosive build is, of course, going to murder Gurnier. And also, this is super anti-infested. Infested? Okay, everyone. Um, infested do not give a shit about radiation damage. Um, so. Don't build radiation against infested. Some people say, oh, it like turns off ancient healer orbs. It doesn't. It, you're, you're not doing any damage to infested. But uh, yeah, this build. 
I typically just run the heat and viral because I'm typically doing void fishers or uh, other things like that where I need heat and viral at the same time to be universal. Um, in arbitrations, it depends on who I'm going against. If I'm going against the infested, I might run this build. Well, most of the time I will run this build. Um, if I'm going against high-level Grenier, I might run the Hunter Munitions. And high-level Corpus, I'll run the Viral Heat build. So, and with this thing's impact, the enemy shields don't stand a chance. Uh, so, and also this thing has an 8 slash, but it doesn't have the status chance. It, it does have good status. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, 24% status is actually fairly high for a weapon like this. Um, but... You could go pure, pure status, and I think you would have decent results. But, that there's that. There's my EE3 blaster. It's powerful, and it's fun. Alright, now we're moving on to the kick, to the uh, catch moon. And the catch moon is a shotgun. Good news. We can use blaze, and we can use prime ravage and prime point blank. Bad news. It's a shotgun. Why is that bad news? This mod needs a primed version. Come on. So, this one is comprised of uh, Steady Slam. So, Steady Slam uh, is good. Also, the loader is stitched this time. It's not splat. Why? I wanted more status with this weapon. Because more status actually does help. Um, I actually got to see what the pack's charge is like with this weapon. So, with this, it's a full auto shotgun with a slow rate of fire. Yep, that's just what, that's exactly what I thought. It's pretty slow. Um, so, well, it's not that slow because it does have only 13 rounds in a mag. Anyway, the fall off is from 12 meters to 24 meters. And it has decent range. It hits pretty damn hard. And, uh, yeah. So, just like the normal uh, kit gun, the normal uh, secondary catch moon, it has unlimited punch through on enemies. So, you don't really need to worry about punch through. You can put punch through on this weapon, which will make it punch through uh, materials like uh, walls and things, but... Now, the reason why I went more status here is because, well, simply because this thing has innate heat. This is the only kit gun that has innate heat. Everything else has innate radiation. Nothing wrong with radiation, of course. It's decent. It's very good against Grenier and fucks up Corpus Robotics pretty well. But having high status plus a lot of heat, heat procs are unlimited. You can have as many heat procs on the enemy as you want until they burn to death. Um, so, also, that reload is pretty nice. So yeah, it does munch through these high-level enemies. Um, I would say the this catch moon is it's an infested killer. I really feel like this this weapon is meant to take down infested really quickly. Um, it will also destroy corpus, but against high-level grenier, eh? The stun lock is nice, um, and getting the headshots with pack seeker is nice, even though pack seeker does absolutely nothing pretty much. It can slash, but meh. Um, also, since this thing has, it has a low total ammo pool and it uses shotgun ammo. So, you're going to run out of ammo pretty quickly. But, yeah. I should have went with more crit, to be honest. But, it really wouldn't have been that big of a boost. I think my crit chance would go up to like 60%. Anyway, I do have a uh, Hunter Munitions build. Now... Um, I'm going to put on Pack Seeker. So, Viral Hunter Munitions. That is a shit ton of heat and a shit ton of viral. Uh, so with this, uh, heat is going to be proccing, uh, heat and viral are proccing like all the damn time. So that's cool. Blaze isn't 100% needed. But I mean, it's Blaze. It gives you damage and heat. So why the hell not? Um, so, I know this is really, I know this is not like super realistic. But I'm not going to a mission for every build for every kit gun. I'm doing four kit guns. And this video is going to be a bit long. Anyway. 
So the viral hunter munitions, does it work? Meh. I mean, yeah, once you get enough crits in there, uh, the slashes start to do a lot. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the catch moon is just in the same spot as the sec uh, the primary catch, catch moon is in the same spot as the secondary. Except the except we can use hunter munitions on this one. Um, now with Warframe buffs, of course, it all changes. But overall, it's it's okay. Uh, okay, the the big fungus here, that's what I called it, um, because I have the Doom Shroom, which is Doom, by the way. It's pretty powerful. Um, it's just meh. What this is a kick gun. I, I, the rattle guts don't change. It's perfect. Um, it could well a little bit stronger, but meh. Uh, this weapon. Definitely give it a bit more range, and I would say give it a little bit more base damage, especially if you go for maximum damage like I did. That would help it a little bit. Also, a, blunder, a prime blunder bust would be very, very helpful. But, whatever. Now let's go on to the Tomb Finger. Tomb Finger, as I called it, because I had no other names. So this weapon is a bit different. It's technically a grenade launcher. Anyway... This is how I have my build. I only have two form into this. I could have put a third one in. I would have more flexibility. But I mean, I have one form left. Yeah. Oh, why'd I do that to myself? Anyway, I have heat, radiation, and corrosive. That is a shit ton of statuses. Um, this thing comes with innate radiation and all that. So, it is. You know, it, it's a it's a tomb finger. It does what the tomb finger do, but also it's secondary fire. You just charge it up and then, and yeah, it 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 explodes in quite quite the area. So the normal fire is this strong. Honestly, this is pretty powerful. But I think my uh, secondary tomb finger is probably a bit stronger. Actually, no, I take that back. Um, I think this is a bit stronger. Um, it has travel time, and I feel like it's a little bit harder to aim than the secondary, but the prime, with the, uh, yeah, the alt fires. It's big AoE, it does damage, it will knock you over, which is annoying, you see? But all, all you gotta do is nudge is this, and then you will get knocked over. So yeah, it's, um... It works. It's pretty fucking powerful. But the thing is, I feel like that this one's going to get really nerfed. Because this at normal levels, everything in, it's like the Koopa Brahma. Everything in Psych gets absolutely obliterated. And honestly, it's kind of annoying because I play Warframe for the combat. And if everyone is blowing everything up and I can't do anything, even if I'm playing Trinity and can't support because I need an enemy, then, then what's the point? But yeah, um, it's pretty powerful. Also, I should mention that every single primary kick gun has a Riven disposition at 1 out of 5. I will get to that later because I have a Riven for my um, gaze. Anyway, I don't have a Hunter Munitions set up because I, could, I can't really do it comfortably and I really don't feel like doing it because I would have to get rid of Vile Acceleration and that is not happening uh, because the charge time is 0.8. And that's annoying. Anyway, the Tomb Finger is fine. It works. It's pretty good. It, it, it feels a little clunky, to be honest, even with Viral Acceleration. Now, if I grab Wisp, I'm sure the fire rate will go way up. But as comparison, um, this is my uh, secondary kick gun. Secondary uh, Tomb Finger. It feels a lot more lively. And uh, the damage is actually pretty comparable. Anyway, let's get to the last one, which is the problem child of the bunch. My focus rifle, a weapon from Reach that I have problems with and don't really like too much. So this is my ribbon. Fire rate and critical chance, 97 rolls. Wow, wonderful. Um, so this weapon has so many fucking issues. Where do I begin? Firstly... Let's talk about what I built it with. So, I went with Thunder Drum because I wanted a balance between uh, crit and status. 
I should have went full crit. Here's why. This thing comes in 8 radiation. And every single proc, if except for slash, toxin, and uh, heat, have limits. If corrosive and viral and all that did not have limits, then this would be perfectly fine. But since it has limits, I really don't know why I went with more status. Anyway, you see this range? That's 15 meters or 16 meters. Um, also, it doesn't, it does this like disco ball shit. It doesn't arc between opponents like the uh, secondary gaze. Let me show you. I'll actually do a direct comparison between both these. Also, um, the meme beam has reached its final form with 176% critical chance. Holy shit. Um, so yeah, th this is one of the most powerful weapons, one of the most powerful secondaries I have. So you see this, it looks like a cutting beam and it arcs between opponents. Also, you notice the rate of fire there. Look how fast that is compared to this. This is max fire rate for beam weapons. Actually, no, it's not. Um, it's not max range either, but l let me let me show you the performance. This weapon would be a lot better if it came with an 8 heat. I'm just saying. But I had a mod for heat. So you see that, you're like, okay, okay. At normal levels, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to destroy, but every single weapon in the entire game destroys at normal levels. So... That, that's cool. It, it does damage. It, it will kill enemies. It also obliterates nullifiers. But I mean, look at the secondary one. Erased. Now, that's probably an unfair comparison because the, fo uh, the, uh, the, the primary, I almost just called it the focus rifle like a nerd. It only has elemental. It doesn't have puncture damage. Why is that a big deal? Puncture is not slash. Puncture is not slash. Slash is the only good one. Shut up, you fucking automatons. Listen, Puncture is very, very good against armor, and you're forgetting that Viral boosts any physical damage type. All three of them it boosts. Also, my secondary gaze, look at that reach. That's 30 meters, and I don't even have Ruinous Extension on. With a Sinister Reach, which I don't have on the 100 Munitions build, with Sinister Reach, it goes up to um, about, I want to say 25, 30-ish meters. Also, DE, why the fuck is Sinister Reach not an Exilus mod? Why? Why... So let me show you the reach with Sinister Reach. So before I had a reach about uh, 15 meters. Now it's about, about, about 29 meters. And that's with an extra mod that you can't put in the extra slot. And without heat, the damage has really gone away. You can tell how strong heat damage is. <coughs> now against normal level enemies, it really won't matter. Also, yeah, that's the uh, effect that this weapon has. It didn't really do much. There are super simple fixes that they could do with this. Okay, first off. Up the rate of fire. This should be doubled. Okay? I'm going to pull out a full status beam weapon that blows this weapon out of the water in a second. Some of you might not even know what the fuck I'm talking about. You might not even know that it exists, but it does. Um, secondly, if this thing came with innate heat, it would be so much better. Because I have a really high status chance. You know why the Kuba Nukor is so fucking ungodly powerful? That status chance plus heat. That's why it's so, so, so fucking powerful. Ignore the critical multiplier. 
Well, you could say, well, if you went completely into crit, this would be a lot better. Or if you went completely into status, it might be better. I don't think completely into status would work. Also, let me show the hunter munitions. So does hunter munitions fix some of these problems? Eh. Yes, it's a lot stronger, but Hunter Munitions is an overpowered mod. It is overpowered beyond belief. And um, I'm getting the orange crits from the crit ups from Vigilante set. So yeah, you basically have to hit heads with this thing at high levels. But yeah, I mean, that range is pathetic. Why isn't there ribbons on, on uh, beam weapons that give plus range? That would be sick. If that was a stat. But... If you have a really good ribbon... By the way, you really won't because ribbons is position 1 out of 5. And you built this thing for pure crit, I'm sure it's going to be very, very powerful. I really should have built a pure crit. I thought of being big brained. Now a build like this, this kind of configuration, hold on, this kind of configuration on a rattle guts minus shrewd and replace it with like a steady slam or a tremor. That's going to be a powerful kit gun. Now what I was talking about, uh, a weapon, the beam weapon that outshines it. It's this thing. You've never heard of the Glaxion Vandal, have you? Oh, I'm sorry. Is it not the Amprix? The Amprix is shit, by the way. Is it not the overpowered and insane fucking Ignis Wraith? You know why the Ignis Wraith is so powerful? High status chance, high critical multiplier, and heat. And this thing has only viral and heat because I can't do corrosive. And corrosive plus cold is not very good. But I mean, this is better. Because this thing has such a high status chance. Before they die, 50 procs of, of fucking heat. And also the rate of fire on this thing is super high. Rate of fire on a beam weapon is basically everything. If it doesn't have a high rate of fire with a beam, uh, and it's a beam weapon, it really is not going to do very well. Now, I'm going to pull out another beam weapon that is also a, be a way better gaze primary. God damn it, I keep doing that. Where are you? The Quanta Vandal. Now, the Quanta Vandal, do these stats look familiar? But, I mean, look at that status chance. So, this thing also comes with innate electricity, so you can have corrosive and heat at the same time. It's very, very powerful and also has some secondary stuff about it. Anyway, this thing also blows the gaze out of the water. This is how powerful the gaze should be. And granted, of course, I could make another one and uh, try again. And I will, once I have more forma. So yeah. I mean, look, look how fast the heat procs are going up. Look at that. That's how powerful the gaze should be. I really also do wish that the gaze arced. Just like its secondary counterpart. So... When it comes down to it, I would highly recommend you make a Rattle Guts because it works very fucking well. It's very powerful. It's probably one of the most powerful rifles you can make. Um, there's probably, uh, it, it's probably not the Kuva Cortac. It's definitely not stronger than the Kuva Cortac. No way. But this kind of build, this obliterates, this absolutely fucking decimates. Um, 
Next, I would either recommend the Catch Moon if you're a big fan of shotguns or the Tomb Finger uh, because both of these are very good against crowds. I would definitely say that the Catch Moon is probably going to be the Infested Killer because, I mean, I've already used it against High Low Infested. It blew them all away. And the Gaze. They really need to buff the shit out of the gaze. Um, they need to give um, it more range by default. I think 15 meters shouldn't be the max range. Now, it could be about 18 or 20 meters for the um, the max range one. But that should be the baseline. That should be like the most powerful gaze you can make has a 20 meter range. And then a little bit weaker one has about a 30 meter range. I think that would be fine and balanced. They should also... I'm not saying get rid of innate radiation because I think it's fine. But they should also have it puncture. Or give it the flux rifle treatment and have puncture and slash. Of course you could say, well that makes it the most powerful thing in existence because it has slash. I don't know why people think that. You know, some of the strongest weapons in this game don't have any slash at all. Interesting, right? Uh, but anyway, I'm going to do something. I am going to do the Viral Hunter Munitions build. And because I can't use Mirage in the in this Simulcrum, I'm going to pull out Rhino. Now, I can't use Mirage here because, well, it's dark and Mirage needs different light, which I think is retarded. So I'm, I'm going to do this. This is the gaze's best shot, and also Rhino has uh, an arcane for damage with primaries. I'm going to do the same uh, Rhino treatment, but I'm going to pull out the Glaxion Vandal uh, as a comparison. Hell, I'll even do it with the secondary. Look at this. Why isn't the primary like this? Why can't the primary arc between opponents? Oh, but that would be overpowered. Look at this. You're saying that this isn't overpowered. This is legitimately one of the strongest secondaries I have. I mean, literally, it's, it's just a it's health draino. It literally is fucking health draino. Anyway, the uh, Glaxion Vandal with... Uh, Wait, can I even... Do I have space to put 100 munitions on this thing for lulls? I technically do if I do this. So, I'll do it for lulls. Wait, did that just neuter my uh, critical chance? My critical damage? Yep, it did. So, that's no bueno. I'm not, I'm not doing that then. I'm going to put back on Hammer Shot. Because this thing has a lot of status. I don't even have 100 munitions build set up. Whatever. It don't matter. Yeah. This is a monster of a beam weapon. The The Glaxion Vandal is great. Also, this thing is like a 30 meter range by default. Or if it's not 30 meters, it's definitely way larger than the, than the gaze is. Yeah. And then I will pull out the Quanta Vandal and then I will pull out the um the EE three again. So where is the Quanta Vandal? I hate how I have to get energy over and over again. So yeah, this is going to be just dead. It's not quite as Drano as my um my meme beam, but it's very close. I mean look at this. This is a relatively old weapon, too, and it's held up this well. So basically what I'm getting at, don't make a gaze kick gun like I made. And DE really, really needs to buff the shit out of the gaze. Because when the gaze first came out, the secondary, it really wasn't, like, spectacular. It was just a good secondary. Um, but now it's, like, really powerful. Yeah, but this, and then this, yeah. 
It would get even worse if I use the heat corrosive or the viral hunter munitions. But yeah. So, basically, what I'm getting at is none of these weapons are bad. But for the enemies that I see, by the way, I do see these little enemies most of the time because I do do arbitrations a lot. Um, it, it it just some of the 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 gaze especially really just cannot keep up. The the catch moon it, it was never designed to keep up with everyone else. But the gaze it's a beam weapon, man. But yeah. In order of recommendation, I would recommend the Rattle Guts first. It is probably the best of the uh, primary kit guns. And then I, the Tomb Finger and the fung uh, fung uh, Catch Moon are pretty fucking similar. Uh, when primary kit guns were first teased, I was thinking that the Gaze kit gun was going to just trump most of the beam weapons that we have now. I thought it was going to be exactly like the secondary one, just with primary mods and a uh, higher critical chance and um, damage and all that because it's a primary and they usually have higher damage even though their mods are a little bit weaker than secondaries. But I was wrong. The Rattle Guts is probably the best in my opinion. It's the most consistent. It's very powerful and extremely usable user friendly um i assume an all status one wouldn't be horrible but i think you'd be better with the bratton prime at that point um but just going full crit or maybe a hybrid <clears throat> like my uh like my other rattle guts that i have here yes I, I i called it that shut up this is a hybrid and this is a very powerful pistol this thing destroys it doesn't give a fuck um so something like this for a primary probably wouldn't give a fuck. Uh, it, it would just it would just rip and tear through everything. Um, but you know it's uh it's good. These weapons are fun. They're they're great. I kind of wish that we could have a bit more variety. It's like okay, do you want a uh, burst rifle rattle guts? That would be cool. Do you want a sniper rifle tomb finger? That would be awesome. Do you want a, like, flamethrower gaze? That would be super cool. Like a plasma thrower? That'd be sick. So. Anyway. That's all I had to say about the primary kit guns. Um, sorry for the video being this long. Another long video like this is going to come out when I do my own Warframe tier list. So, stay tuned for that. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, in Trilby, we trust.